Hello, my name is Luis Yanez and I'm a third year PhD student working at Queen Mary University of London under the supervision of Professor Maurice Selfick. Today, I will show you how to do in situ hybridization, which is a powerful technique for localizing gene expression. I will demonstrate RNA-RNA in situ hybridization to detect messenger RNA in the starfish tissue. In this video, I will show the procedures for in situ hybridization, tissue preparation, probe hybridization, antibody coupling, developing of the signal, and finally mounting of the slide. The in situ hybridization technique starts with the sectioning of the tissue. In this video, I will show the paraffin imbibing technique, which consists of fixation, decalcification, dehydration, clearing, paraffin imbibing, and lastly the sectioning. Fixation step keeps the tissue from decomposing or being damaged by bacteria or enzymatic activity. For this, I will fix a starfish arm by soaking it in 4% paraformaldehyde overnight. Depending on the kind of tissue you are using, a decalcification step may be required for a good embedding procedure. Also, to avoid the loss of the tissue during the sectioning. For this, I will use Morse solution for four hours. Now, all of the water in the tissue needs to be removed through a dehydration process. This dehydration step is done with washes of sequentially higher concentrations of ethanol from 30 to 100% for 30 minutes in each wash. Clearing refers to the property of the solvent used. They have a relatively high refraction index. When tissue gets into the solvent, it becomes transparent. This will help us to improve the signal we get from the in situ. The clearing agent needs to be miscible both with ethanol and wax. Xylene is normally used for this. It will also help us to remove the lipids from the tissue. The xylene needs to be replaced with paraffin, which infiltrates the tissue. This is typically achieved by immersing the tissue in filter molten wax three times for one hour each at 65 degrees. The tissue is finally put into a mold and molten wax is added to fill the mold and allow to solidify. The wax gives the tissue support and shape before it's cut into thin sections for the staining. In order to put the tissue on a slide, we need to first cut it using the microtome. The thickness should be between 7 to 12 micrometers. This time I will use 11 micrometers. After the tissue is sectioned, the section is moved into a slide which contains water at 65 degrees. Later, the water is removed with tissue paper and left to dry overnight. Once the tissue has been mounted on a slide, the next step is the hybridization. In situ hybridization, uses nucleic acid probe, which hybridize with a nucleic acid target in the tissue sample. A probe is just a single-stranded nucleic acid, which is complementary to the nucleic acid strand we are looking for. The probes are labeled during in vitro transcription reaction with digoxygenin, and this label will eventually be detected using anti-digoxygenin antibodies. We need to remove the wax that helps us to section in the tissue. For this, we will use xylene. Now, we need to rehydrate the tissue. For this, we will use decreasing concentrations of ethanol. The tissue is rehydrated. We will permeabilize it using proteinase K. It is crucial to optimize this step as weak proteinase treatment will decrease the signal of your mRNA. While Using excessive amounts of protein SK may degrade your tissue. Now, I will postfix the slides using 4% paraformaldehyde. This treatment will help us to preserve the tissue after the protein SK treatment. We will postfix for 40 minutes. We will remove paraformaldehyde by washes. I need to block the slides from non specific binding of RNA. Pre hybridization buffer has many different components to keep the RNA denatured so that it's linear and can bind to the probe effectively. 
It also has other components that minimize non-specific binding. For this, we will use prehybridization buffer, which contains yeast RNA. We add the hybridization buffer containing 500 to 1000 nanograms of our proof. Then we will cover it with parafilm. This is to avoid evaporation of the probe. Now I will use some clean film to avoid the evaporation. I will leave the slides overnight at 65 degrees in the oven to allow the hybridization between the RNA in the tissue section and the probe. Today I will wash the slides to remove any non-specific binding of the proof. For this, I will remove the plastic tray from the oven and wash the slides in SSC buffer for 40 minutes twice. Next, I need to block any non-specific site for the anti-degoxygenin antibodies, so I will add antibody blocking buffer and leave for two hours at room temperature. Now, I will incubate the slides with antidegoxygenin antibody conjugated with alkaline phosphatase. I will leave this reaction overnight in the fridge. During these last days, we will develop the signal. For this, we will need first to wash all the unbind antibodies to the slides. For this, we will use buffer B1 and wash the slides three times. After washing the slides, we add 500 microliters of developing buffer. I keep this in a dark container because the developing buffer is light sensitive. Depending on the kind of probe, it will take several hours to develop the signal, so I will check these lights every hour. After the desired intensity is achieved, we wash the slides with autoclaved water. After this process, we dry the slides on the hot plate for about 45 minutes. Then put them into 100% ethanol for 10 seconds to eliminate some background. And put the slides into Istoclear. Istoclear enhances the signal and is miscible with the mounting media. The slides are then mounted using Isto mount and covered with a cover slip. Once the slides are mounted, we can view them under the microscope. Here is an image of the staining made earlier. You can see the expression of my target gene in the radial nerve cord of the starfish. Expression is visible as blue staining. To summarize, in situ hybridization involves tissue preparation, probe hybridization, antibody coupling, developing of the signal, and the mounting of the slides. In this video, I show you how to do in situ hybridization techniques. I hope you find it useful for your own research. Thank you for watching.